Hello, this is Art Smalley, president of Art of Lean Incorporated. And today on behalf of the Lean Enterprise Institute, I have another short video clip for you, this time on the topic of situational leadership. Now it doesn't matter whether you're doing Lean, Six Sigma, or any general flavor of improvement. I think this, this topic is of high relevance to any organization seeking to improve. So stick around, I think you'll enjoy it. Now some of you might have a pretty strong background on situational leadership and others might be fairly new to the topic. So what I thought I'd do in this first video is introduce the general concept. And then in subsequent videos, I'm going to share some of my personal experiences working with Toyota Japan and how I viewed situational leadership being applied in a very good way. Now, for those of you who don't know the background in situational leadership, it goes back to research in the latter part of the 1960s. And three gentlemen by the name of uh, Paul Hersey, Ken Blanchard, and Dewey Johnson wrote a book, I think in 1969 first, uh, called The Management of Organizational Behavior. And then in subsequent decades, some of them, in particular Blanchard and Hersey, went on to write follow-up books and help develop what we call modern situational leadership. And I also want to call out a, a quote by Stephen Covey while we're on the, the beginning of this topic. And Stephen didn't have a lot to do with situational leadership, but he did have this really interesting quote, which I think matters. He says, managers manage things, leaders lead people. You cannot lead things and you cannot manage people. And I think that's important to keep in mind because at the end of the day, you do have to lead people. You can't manage them just like an object. Now, situational leadership theory and introduction can be boiled down to roughly something like this. Situational leadership is a process for developing people by providing the most effective leadership style over time so the individual can achieve their highest level of performance. And that I think is very much in tune with the Toyota production system, lean thinking, or any company striving to improve. You wanna get the best of both scenarios. You wanna get results and you wanna develop people for the better while you do it. So in Toyota, we call this respect for people and continuous improvement. And situational leadership theory provides a structure for thinking about that by breaking it up into four cases. So let's, let's look into those four cases. Okay. In the steps of situational leadership, first thing you have to do is diagnose the situation. And this is very lean in and of itself. What do we usually do? We, we go to the facts, go to the gemba, get the facts, grasp the situation, go and see what's actually happening, happening, right? And the same thing in leadership, that's a good practice. Diagnose the situations to understand what's going on with the individual. And they break people into four categories. There's more to it than this but they put people in categories of D1, D2, D3, or D4 for their development level, okay? And your development level depends upon the task. It's not static and changes over time and is task specific, okay? But someone in D1 is low competence, but very high commitment. We sometimes call them the eager beginner. D2 is low to some competence, but low commitment. We call that the disillusioned or frustrated learner. D3 is the moderate to high competence individual with variable commitment, and we call that person sometimes the reluctant contributor, and D4 is the high competence and high commitment case, or the, the peak performer, like an Olympic athlete, okay? And obviously you wanna progress as many people through these development levels towards the, the green area of D4 as much as possible, but you can't treat them all the same is the point, okay? Now to further emphasize that point, they emphasize that you must have leader, you must have flexibility in your leadership style. Okay? One size doesn't fit all. And they break leadership styles again into four categories, and these will match with the D development zones. S1, S2, S3, and S4. S1 is for directing and providing good quality direction. S2 is actual coaching, teaching the how, the what, the how, and the why, key points, and motivation. S3 is supporting, okay? giving people support, less direction, less guidance, but support and, and, and help when they get stuck. And S4 is the, the uh, delegating bucket, which is much level, less lower levels of support and lower direction because those people are obviously highly, highly capable. And the point is you can't mix and match these four styles. Most people have a favorite. In most organizations, I, three, I see S3 and S4 as the favorite style, but that's a mismatch if the person is in what we call the developing categories of D1, D2. And I'll share some examples of that. But as simple as this sounds, I see organizations screwing this up again and again and again, okay? Also in situational leadership, there's a, a section called partnering for performance. And this is again, what I believe is fundamentally 
in line and very much in sync with, with lean thinking and TPS. You want to agree upon goals with the individual or team. You want to diagnose the, the situation, the development level in the situation. You want to determine the right leadership style and course of action. You want to work together. Okay. And fifth, you want to follow through during the process of improvement, working with improvement, changing your leadership style over time to reflect performance. And again, as simplistic and as easy as this sounds, I see organizations and individuals stumbling over this time and time again, which is why I wanna go over it in the next several videos. So today, we just hit the high level of what is situational leadership. In upcoming videos, I wanna take you through why I think it really relates nicely with lean thinking and the Toyota production system. And I'll share examples of how I experienced this in Toyota throughout my career and development process when I was given good direction, good coaching, good supporting, and at times when they delegated things to me. But again, one size didn't fit all, and there were some excellent managers and leaders at this in Toyota who were very, very good. So I'll share those stories in upcoming videos. So stay tuned if you're interested, and stay safe, and have a great day.